fall of mankind begin with this question. Yea, hath God said? Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 reads, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said? Although nearly 6,000 years have passed since the serpent injected his poison into the mind of Eve, his target is still the same. The battle is for the Word of God. The spiritual lifeblood of the human race is the Word of God. It brings salvation. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 reads, "...being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God." It produces faith. Romans 10:17 reads, "...faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God." In Luke chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus Christ made this remarkable statement, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Either Jesus Christ was one of the most deceived men that ever lived, or somewhere on this earth there are the very words of God. I believe without any shadow of a doubt, the King James Bible is the very words of God for the English-speaking people. And just as Satan attacked the Word of God in the Garden of Eden, the King James Bible is under attack. And Satan's main weapon of attack are the many new versions that are now flooding the scene. And I'm going to prove that on the remainder of this tape. Friend, if you've come this far, please keep listening. For what you're about to hear may be the most important words that you have ever heard. Most people believe the different versions are basically the same. They believe the newer versions are just harmless updating of words and made easier to understand. Nothing could be further from the truth. One of the clearest verses in the Bible proclaiming the deity of Jesus Christ, that Jesus was God in the flesh, is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The King James Bible reads, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. The King James says clearly, God was manifest in the flesh. The New International Version says, He appeared in a body. The NIV, NASV, RSV, NRSV, the other versions, changed God to He. He is a pronoun that refers to a noun or antecedent. Friend, there is no antecedent in the context. The statement does not even make grammatical sense. He appeared in a body. I mean, what does that say? Everyone has appeared in a body. But the King James is clear and definite. God was manifest in the flesh. A direct attack at the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 2, verse 33, the King James Bible reads, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. The newer versions read, The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. The child's father, do you believe that Joseph was Jesus' father? Not if you believe the virgin birth. Not if you believe John 3.16 that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. A subtle attack at the virgin birth. Why? Who would do such a thing? Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 reads, the King James reads, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The NIV reads, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The new versions rip the precious words through his blood out. Friend, salvation is only through his blood. That old song says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And surely something has to be done with John 3.16. So the NIV and crew reads, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. Removing the critical word begotten. Listen, if Jesus Christ was the one and only, then what happens to the wonderful promises to believers like 1 John 3, 2? Beloved, now are we the sons of God. An obvious contradiction appears. Psalms chapter 119, verse 160 says, Thy word is true. John 17, verse 17 says, Thy word is truth. Titus chapter 1, verse 2 clearly says that God cannot lie. And yet in these new versions, a provable lie is found in Mark chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. The NIV reads, It is written in Isaiah the prophet, 
I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. But I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way is not found in Isaiah. It is found in Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. The King James Bible correctly reads as it is written in the prophets, plural. Friend, if the Word of God is true and God cannot lie, then these new versions cannot possibly be the Word of God. They contain provable lies. Oh, by the way, did you think David killed Goliath? Not according to the NIV, the RSV, the new RSV, and boys. In 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 19, they erroneously read, Elhanan, son of Jeroboam, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. And one of the lies used to promote these perversions is that they're easier to read and understand. But according to several studies, that's not the case. In a flesh Kincaid grade level research study, the King James Bible is by far the easiest. Out of 26 different categories, the King James Bible graded easier in a whopping 23 out of 26. But the most obvious evidence of satanic influence in these new versions can be found in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. The King James Bible reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? The new versions read, How have thou fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn? The new versions remove Lucifer and replace it with morning star. Friend, Revelation chapter 22, verse 16 reads, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star, a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 22, verse 16 says the morning star is the Lord Jesus Christ. And these new versions incredibly make Lucifer and Jesus Christ the same person in Isaiah 14, 12. What blasphemy, what perversion, and there's no reason whatsoever for the change. When you consider the Hebrew word for star, kokob, is not even found in Isaiah 14, 12. Friend, there's no doubt who's the father of these new versions. If Satan is the author of these new versions, one subject he will aim his attack is the place the Bible calls hell. And the new versions go into loony land, removing the word hell. Many times they change the word hell to grave or death. Like Psalm 917, the King James read, The wicked shall be turned into hell. The NIV reads, The wicked return to the grave. Why, friend, we all return to the grave. What does that mean? Many times when the new versions come to the obvious word hell, Rather than translate the word hell, they'll leave the Greek word Hades or Hebrew Sheol in. And the New King James does this 23 times. Rather than translating the obvious word hell, they simply refuse to even translate it. And this is what they call a better translation. And these new versions are easier to read and understand. Who in their right mind thinks Hades or Sheol is easier to understand than hell? Friend, why didn't they leave in the Greek word Koranus for heaven? Because someone is trying to remove and cast doubt on the place the Bible calls hell. Another clear display of satanic perversion is found in Luke chapter 11, the Lord's Prayer is subtly transformed into the devil's prayer. The King James Bible in Luke chapter 11 verses 2 through 4 reads, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Incredibly, the new versions take out which art in heaven, as in heaven, 
and but deliver us from evil. Every reference to heaven is completely removed, and the father of the new virgins is not in heaven, and he does not deliver from evil. I wonder who it could be. I'll give you a hint. Read John chapter 8, verse 44. Are you getting the picture, friend? Do you see how subtle, seemingly harmless the changes are? Most people reading these versions would never even catch them, and yet how deadly they are to the integrity of God's Word. They attack the Lord Jesus Christ. They attack the wonderful plan of salvation. They glorify Lucifer. They remove hell. And these are not isolated cases. There are over 6,000 documented changes and just the New Testament alone. Yes, friend, you'd better believe Satan has launched an attack on your Bible. In Luke chapter 8, Jesus Christ tells the parable of the sower. In verses 11 and 12, Jesus says, Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. And he goes on to say, Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word. In the New Testament alone, the New King James takes away 2,289 words. The NIV takes away 5,219. The NASV takes over out over 3,500. The RSV takes out over 6,900 words in just the New Testament. And they even take out complete verses. Like Acts chapter 8, verse 37, the King James read, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The NIV, NASV, RSV, New RSV, and the New Versions read, Zip, nothing. They took the whole verse out. One of the best verses in the Bible on salvation through Jesus Christ and they completely rip it out. One of the greatest verses in all the Bible, Matthew chapter 18, verse 11, For the Son of Man has come to seek to save that which is lost. They completely take it out. They take out Romans 16, 24, Mark 11, 25, Acts 15, 34, and over and over and over, your Bible is literally taken apart. Jesus Christ says in Luke chapter 4, Verse 4, it is written that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Not surprising, the NIV and New Versions and crew, they take out the last half of Luke chapter 4, verse 4, but by every word of God. The NIV completely removes 16 verses. The New American Standard removes 17. The RSV completely removes 25. The NRSV removes 16, and so on and so on. Don't take our word for it. Get your Bible rack and look them up if you don't believe it. As God promised, friend, He has preserved His word for the English-speaking people in the King James Bible. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 10 says, A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of the king is, there's power. The King James Bible. By the way, the word James is not an English word, but a Hebrew word. Do you know what the Hebrew word for James is? It's Jacob. You'll never guess what Psalm 147, verse 19 says. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 reads, The word of God is not bound. Anybody can freely print, distribute, and reproduce the King James Bible without asking permission from anybody. It is not bound. All other translations are bound by copyright laws. The New American Standard, copyright, Lockman Foundation. The New International Version, copyright, New York International Bible Society. The New King James Version, copyright, Thomas Nelson Publish. Who would seriously think the living Word of Almighty God is bound by human copyright laws? Friend, if you have a King James Bible, you have the very words of God. And don't let anybody take it from you. Dr. Frank Loxton was the co-founder of the New American Standard Version. And Dr. Loxton actually wrote the preface to the New American Standard. But after re-examining the evidence, Dr. Loxton completely denounced every attachment 
to the New American Standard. Here's his own words. I'm afraid I'm in trouble with the Lord. I encourage you to go ahead with it. We, we laid the groundwork. I wrote the format. I, I helped to interview some of the translators. I sat with the translators. I wrote the preface. When you see the New American Standard, they're my words. When I got my copy, I got one of the 50 deluxe copies that were printed. Mine was number seven. Blue, light blue cover. But it was a big, rather big, and I couldn't carry it with me. And I, I never really looked at it. I just took for granted it was done as we started it, you know. Until some of my friends across the country began to learned that I had some part in it, and they started saying, what about this, what about this, especially Dr. David Otis Fuller in Grand Rapids. I've known him for 35 years, and he'd say, he always called me Frank, I called him Duke. He said, Frank, what about this? You had part in it. What, what about this? What about this? Well, first, I thought, no, wait a minute, let's don't go overboard, let's don't be too pretty. You know how you justify yourself the last minute. I got the place, I said to Ann, I'm in trouble. I can't refute these arguments. They're, it's wrong. It's terribly wrong. It is frightfully wrong. And what am I going to do about it? Well, I went through heart search, uh, some real soul searching for about four months. I don't know. I think about four months. And I sat down and wrote the most difficult letter of my life, I think. And I wrote to my friend Dewey, and I said, Dewey, I don't want to add to your problems. Lost his wife some three years ago. I was there for the funeral. The uh, doctor made a mistake in operating on a cataract. He lost the sight of one eye, and then had to have an operation on the other. Had a slight heart attack, had sugar diabetes, man 74 years of age. But I wrote and said, I can no longer ignore these criticisms I'm hearing, and I can't refute them. The only thing I can do, and dear brother, I have nothing against you, and I can witness at the judgment seat of Christ. And before men were ever go that you were 100% sincere, he's not a translator, he's not, he's not schooled in language or anything, he's just a businessman. He did the promoting, he had the money, he did the promoting. So I, I said, he did it conscientiously. He wanted absolutely right, he thought it was right. I guess nobody pointed out some of these things to him when it was finished, but nevertheless, I said, I must, under God, renounce every attachment to the New American Standard. I have the copy of the letter. In fact, I have his letter. Showed it to some people that Robert saw it. Mike saw it. Stating that he was bowled over, that he was shocked beyond words. That that's putting it mildly, but he said, I'll write you in a few weeks. I still love you. To me, you're going to be Franklin, my friend, throughout the course. And he said, I'll write you in three weeks. But he won't write me now. He was to be married, sent us an invitation to come to the reception. Standing in the courtroom, I mean in the county court by the desk, the clerk said, what is your full name, sir? And he said, Franklin Dewey. That's the last word he spoke on this earth. So he was buried two days before he was supposed to be married, and he's with the Lord, and he loves the Lord. He knows different now. But I tell you, dear people, you're going to have, somebody's going to have to stand, and no matter. If